What it do, what it do, what it do. What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend. Yo, I'm back. The one and only Keith Allen. So, let me tell you this, man. Throughout the past, we've had quite a few pros who hold the throne of best controller player, right? Aiden, Woofy, Scoped. However, in the last season, there's one player who has definitely taken that crown. His name is Coop. Coop? Oh my goodness. Absolutely smashed his competition in the two previous major solo events, winning $60,000 in five days. Yo, bro, can I borrow something? Even lately, man, he won a Super Stack Trios practice event. And going forward, Coop is the one we all need to look out for. So, today, yo, let's take a peek at some arena games from Coop to see how he wins fights, his techniques, his strategies, overall play style, you know, everything that we can look at, man, so all of us can improve and really just play like him. And of course, practice is everything. So at the end, I'm gonna be going over a few ways that you can train to work toward the play just like him. But if playing like the pros is your goal, all right, don't forget, to check out our site loaded with courses, live classes from pros, and the best coaches available. Their goal is to help you improve as fast as possible. So follow the link in the description to save time and start improving today. Bunch of crunch army, where you at? It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is it, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Yo, and let's get this going. So, one of the biggest reasons Coop is so good at winning fights is how he plays the building grid. Of course, in Fortnite, you can't build a wall in every single nook and cranny, right? Only predetermined spots on the map's building grid. So what Coop does in almost every fight is position in a way where he can utilize unused parts of the grid. For instance, he's gonna approach his opponent's walls from the left. That way, if they edit while he pressures their wall, he can just shoot and build a wall instead of just shooting and getting hit back. So by playing the grid, it means Coop is always standing in or moving toward a position that allows him to build. Ideally, this is somewhere that he can control every single build around him, all four walls, the floors, and even the cones. To achieve this, Coop will sometimes horizontally expand or tunnel until he reaches an unoccupied area, or he'll move vertically by dropping down or going up a layer and box up there. But in summary, Coop's always trying to play on an available spot on the grid, especially an area where he can build walls for cover. That makes him get peace controlled less often, and it means he survives longer. So definitely try to keep this tip in mind, alright? The next reason we see Coop absolutely dominating fights is his insane trigger discipline. What I mean is, yo, Coop will often hold his fire and take a second to line up his crosshair just so that he's confident that he'll land the shot. And really, this can make all the difference in the world. So, you know, many of us tend to shoot as soon as possible, which leads to either missing significant burst damage or giving away our position. But Coop is patient, and he realizes that missing shots is much more damaging than taking an extra half a second to aim. And that really applies to all weapon types, especially rifles and shotguns, so you can deal much more opening damage and land many more one pumps. But considering how crucial opening damage is when it comes to winning fights, taking the extra time to do this can be a game changer, man. If you feel like you're missing most of your shots, you might be trying to shoot too quickly. So give this tip a try, all right? All right, my friends, so another thing that Coop does exceptionally well is time is movement and close range encounters. Movement is critical, bro, when it comes to surviving and close range fights since it makes you much more difficult to hit. But many of us either don't move at the right time or we don't really move unpredictably enough. To see what I mean, all right, take a look at this for example. Coop enters this box and initially starts strafing towards the right. Coop sees his opponent pull out their shotgun, and that's the sign they're about to fire. So, right at this time, he alters his movement by crouching and strafing left now. The opponent whiffs entirely, and Coop takes zero damage in what it could have been a risky play. So, it might seem simple, and really it is, but timing and unpredictability are everything when it comes to movement. And if executed correctly, man, it could be enough to save your skin in box fights. And if box fighting tips are what you're looking for, you can find a bunch over at Pro Guys, as well as many more guides on how to win and improve your placement. So, start by being efficient with your practice by checking us out today. But next up, my friends, let's talk about Coop's utility usage. Depending on if he's W King or playing in FNCS finals, Coop's utility usage is different. But what remains consistent is that he always emphasizes carrying utility no matter what. 
All of these items have been considered very strong or even overpowered for a while now. Things like crash pads, shockwave grenades, bouncers, and even floppers have so many uses and Coop really takes advantage of all of them. He'll use bouncers to rotate in-game, go for height and build battles, or even close the gap on enemies, something that a ton of us forget to do. And with crash pads, he'll take height and fights, he'll use them to jump into boxes, and to rotate and stack tournament in-game. Speaking of which, a significant reason he popped off in DreamHack and the FNCS was that he played the flopper in crash pad meta. He prioritized fishing and landing at a loot-dense spot so that you know he always had those items and could utilize them during the in-game. Which actually brings us to our next topic, guys. Bunch of crunch army. So, when we're watching Coop stream, he mentioned something about how you can't do well in tournaments if your drop location isn't up to par. And that's sort of what I want to talk about planning your game. Your drop location, loot route, you know, where you fish, what items you're going to carry, and where you're going to rotate all matters so much when it comes to consistent placements. Most of us think it's more about mechanics, and while that definitely plays a part, I get it, running an effective plan and refining it when necessary can also improve your results dramatically, okay? And that's the thing, Coop understands all his drop spots to a T, whether it's the spot he uses for pro matches or the drops he'll use to WK in arena. He knows where every floor loot is, fish spot, and upgrade bench is. Side note, okay, Coop upgrades in like pretty much every game. Now, that's more important than ever, man. Like with the purple and gold pumps being back, he prioritizes upgrading. But every bit of knowledge gets absorbed and taken advantage of, and that can play a significant part in the outcome of your matches. So my advice is to plan your drop spots, your paths, and everything about your game as much as you can. Run it in arenas and scrims and slowly rectify anything you identify as not working. Given enough time, you will have a plan that you can trust and rely on. All right, guys, so moving on. The last thing to note about Coop is how we use his critical self-evaluation to improve. All right, what that means is that you can't really go blaming your deaths on outside factors, all right? Blaming your failures on things outside of your control, it only hinders your growth as a player. I say it all the time. <laughs> Some of us like to hold enemies responsible and say they were playing stupidly, or will even say our RNG sucked. While the things might be true, if you can treat every loss as entirely your fault, you can find more areas to improve on instead of just shifting the blame. So for example, like instead of blaming an enemy for storm pushing you, ask yourself why you were in the storm to begin with. That way you could just come up with a better solution. You know, you could rotate early, avoid situations ever even happening again. But basically, from what we've seen, Coop rarely gets tilted, he understands his own mistakes and he recognizes when enemies make great plays on him. This is all part of the critical self-evaluation process. Treat the loss as your fault and look at what you could have done to do better. One way Coop accomplishes this is by reviewing his vibes. You know, and that's really because vibe reviewing is super helpful if you aren't entirely sure why you lost your game in the first place. All right, guys, so before we end, I just want to go over a quick plan of action that you can take to better yourself who wants to get better? I know I do. Come on, man. Let's do this. Because like I said, practice is everything. And without a plan, you're not going to really get anywhere. All right. Here's what I want you guys to do. You guys, you guys ready? Here we go. Every day, I want you guys to start with 10 to 15 minutes of free building, working on practical techniques such as side jumps, wall edits into peace control, tunneling, ramp phasing, and whatever else that you can get warmed up with. All right. Second, here's what I want you to do. Play one or two matches of Zone Wars. Here, and I mean like right here, you can focus on warming up your aim, your W King, and your in-game rotations, okay? As many hours of scrims as you can to fit in. Coop says he plays up to six hours of scrims every day, to which he credits his incredible success. Wow, that's a lot. Spend your spare time outside of scrims, W King and Arena, right? Points don't matter unless you're playing for a spot on the leaderboard. So don't pay too much mind if you lose, all right? It's all part of the process. And finally, my friends, end the day with some VOD reviews, either of your scrim matches or other top pro scrimming. Here, you know, you can work on and just refine your game plan. All right, so let's do a quick recap on what you need to do to play like Coop. Here we go. First off, try to play the building grid so that you can always have a spot to build after going for a shot. Got it? Practice, trigger, discipline, and times where your shots matter. Time your movement and try to be as unpredictable as possible, all right? Next thing, carry and use the heck out of your utility items like floppers, crash pads, bouncers, and shockwaves. Next thing up, guys, have a plan <laughs> and always refine it as you play. And lastly, be critical and treat every death as a time, you know, for self-evaluation. Your deaths, remember, are your fault. Find your mistakes and try to fix them. 
All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta, your motivation guy. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Yo, make sure that you check out Coop on his socials at L2Coop. He's one of the best players in the game right now, so don't miss out on watching him, all right? Also, drop a like on the video. Make sure that you're subbed to the channel and comment on which person you want to see us do a video on next. And uh, I almost forgot. Keep eating that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going.